break every chain, break every chain. That was awesome. Praising God. Remember how I was set free? Man, it gets me fired up. And we need the power of Christ to set us free. All right, so we are Community Bible Church Church Cibolo. We exist to strengthen the body of Christ through the Word of God and through fellowship, and life group. And our mission is to reach, teach, and help people in Jesus' name in the church civil area. I just felt a desire, a re renewed passion for reaching the lost and making disciples because Sean Dittman and I went to a missions church planning discipleship conference two weeks ago in Iowa. And I just have this vision. I, I know God wants us and I just feel that we should start churches, life groups in every neighborhood in Church Civil Law. That's our goal. Because Christ said, go and make disciples of all nations. He didn't say, hey, come hang out at the church. Let's all, you know, get hype up in church and not do anything. He wants us to get hype, poured the Holy Spirit on us at church and then take it out to people during the week and to make churches reach people and have their lives and eternities changed. And so that's our vision and goal. I want, by God's grace, to have one church, one home church in every neighborhood in the Church Civil Law, Selma, Universal City District. Um, we're going to start one at a time. You eat the elephant one bite at a time, right? So we're praying for the Holy Spirit to show us where we would put that next Community Bible Church in the neighborhood. Y'all with me on that? Amen. Let's go forth in the power of Christ. Now we've been in our sermon series, Life Skills, Triumphing in Spiritual Warfare. Because we're in a spiritual battle. We're in a spiritual war. Now if you've been here for quite some time, you know that I'm usually gobbling up verses of the Bible. Preaching, I've been known to preach through books of the Bible and we could sometimes cover a chapter or half a chapter on one Sunday. But lately I've really slowed down on these verses. I've done that because I think these are vital verses for Christians to know. If I was playing with nitroglycerin, I think I would slow down and read the directions. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> right. And we're playing with dynamite, and we face a powerful enemy in Satan. So I think it would be to our advantage to slow down, see what the Word says, and really take it in and get it, right? So with Ephesians 6.10, we're going to revisit this. Finally, brothers, Christians, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We've looked at what it means to be strong in the Lord. That word strong means to be strengthened or continually strengthened by the Lord's power. And that power comes through the Holy Spirit at the moment you are born again. When you receive Christ, the Holy Spirit, that power comes to live inside of you. It changes your heart. It cleanses your life through Christ's blood. And he stirs us up with energy to fight. In James it says, resist the devil and what? He will flee. And the Holy Spirit gives us that strength, that power to give us victory over the flesh, our bodies and Satan and this world, his kingdom. And he tells us why we, what we should do. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That's a word. Wiles means deception. It means scheming. Satan's always scheming, isn't he? Trying to derail the work of God. 
to bring division to churches and their marriages and to families. That's the schemes. That's the wiles of the devil. It's major, he's a major antagonist to the church, to Christians. And his wiles and his schemes are many. And we're going to talk about that today. Well, let's keep going. For we not, and this is why, again, he's continuing, why we should put on the armor, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. And he repeats it, therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that why you may be able to stand against, withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Now, I'm going to finish my last message on these three verses. And then next week, we will get into piece by piece the armor of God in verses 14 through 17. We will take those and break them down piece by piece. But today, I want to speak on the devil's deceit, his schemes, the wiles of the devil. And they are many. They are strong. So there's a picture of the Roman soldier up there. We must be continually relying upon God's strength to be poured into us. And we must continually be ready for the battle. We need to have that readiness mindset we talked about last week. As soldiers, as I was in the Air Force, my job, you know, you're doing your job, but you have to have your gear. You have to have all of your armor. I've got to have my gun and my grenade launcher and my flak vest and my, I gotta be, my helmet. I have to be ready for the battle. Like this Roman soldier, we have to be ready for the battle. So, the schemes of the devil, the devil's deceit. Now, Satan as he's known, that's his name. But he's called many other adjectives in the Bible. He's called the devil. He's only called the devil in the New Testament. I didn't know that until I was studying for this sermon. I only found in the New Testament. He was a created being. He was an angel of God. And he thought he could ascend and be like God. But he was cast down. Him and his cohort who thought they could create a heavenly coup and take over. In the book of Isaiah and Ezekiel, it tells us that. And he's a powerful adversary. And we do not come against him lightly at all. You shouldn't be flippant when you're coming against these evil powers. But Satan's power is limited. I want you to know that before we go further. Satan's power is limited and bound by his creative his creative nature because he was created by God. So he's limited. He's not God. He's got he's not God's equal. He's the equal of Michael and Gabriel, other archangels. But he has power and he deals in deceit. And that main deceit, the, the main reason he exists now is to bring division, to bring a veil, a covering over the hearts and minds of men to keep them from God's kingdom. That is the reason, that is the purpose of his deceit. So, turn with me in your Bible to the book of Job. It's in the Old Testament, but it'll be up on the screen as well. Satan's deceit. The book of Job, I mean Job.
Job was a good man. He feared God and was one of God's children. He was rich in cattle and camels and servants. He had a large family and God had blessed him. And his family would get together. They would feast. All of his children and his, sister and his daughters, his sons would get together and their families and they would feast. And then let's go down to verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the, the Lord and Satan. And Satan also came with among them. And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. And so this shows Satan's limited power. He, he's not omnipresent like God. God's everywhere, but Satan is not. He has to, he has to move about the, the earth. Like any other angel, he's not everywhere at once. He's limited in his power. You see that? So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro and going back and forth. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil? So Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Here he is accusing God's children, God's man, have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. Now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your what? Power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. There's a mystery going on here. There's something that happens that Satan goes throughout the world and he's looking. And he goes before God in heaven. And it tells us this in the New Testament that he what? He makes accusations against the saints of God. And he considers them. And he brings them before God. And I wonder how many people today he goes to God and he says, maybe it's someone, a Christian leader. And the same thing happens where God pulls away his protection. It's a trial, it's a tribulation. And to me, this puts in its place this idea that if something evil or something bad happens to a person, that they did something wrong, they must be in sin. That's ridiculous, isn't it? The Bible says of Job that what? He was a man of God. He feared God and he was doing everything that God had required of him. And yet, God allowed Job to go through this trial. These trials. Don't be so discouraged when trials come your way. They're going to come. Maybe God is testing you to, to prove to Satan, that's my boy. He's not going to turn his back on me. Take away that hedge of protection and see what he does. God's like, sure, I'll pull it away, but he still will worship me. So Satan has power, it's limited power. Go down to verse 13. Now there was a day when the sons and the daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house, and a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing, 
and the donkeys feeding beside them, when the Sabaeans raided them and took them away. Indeed, they have killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. Let's get down to verse 18. While he was speaking, another also came and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house, and suddenly uh, a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the young people, and they were dead. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Okay? So Satan does have power. He has the power to influence people for evil. The Sabaeans, the Chaldeans, came and killed Job's children. Okay? Satan can influence. He possesses people to do evil. Evil possession. Demon possession. It happens. Judas Iscariot in the New Testament says that Satan himself entered into Judas and caused him to betray the Son of God. We face a mighty foe and he does have power. I think about ISIS in the Middle East. That Satan would come across and into those people and have them to slay and to martyr thousands of Christians and doing such heinous acts to them. That is demonic. That is of Satan. Now, I have said in the past that all Satan has is deceit and lies. Which that's not exactly all the way true. And I'll have to recant that statement. Because after reading this, I realized that power of Satan to influence men for evil. Satan does have power in this physical world to afflict you, to kill you. He did it to Job's children. He afflicted and them. He killed them with the sword. And what did he do? He came to the Chaldeans. He came to the Sabaeans. Hatched a plot. Hey, Job has all this wealth. And they're partying. Now's the right time to attack. And to kill them and to steal their wealth. And I could see the Sabaeans. And he came to the Chaldeans and he said, Look at all those camels. You guys need camels. They're partying. Go kill the servants. Take the camels. Now's the right time. And they did. So Satan has the ability to strike you in the physical realm. And to influence men for evil. Now, he also has some power over nature. Look in verse 16. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, The fire fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I alone have escaped to tell you. And then the sons and daughters were eating in verse 18, drinking in the oldest brother's house. And suddenly a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house. And it fell on the young people and they are, they are dead. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Satan's bringing these lightning storms to kill God's people and to harm God's man. Okay, and so just because something evil happens again, it doesn't mean it's always from the Satan or the evil one, you know. On the same way, we see that God brings judgment upon people. But we can't universally say that every time something bad happens, it's from Satan or it's from God. There's, we live in a falling war and, world and there's storms. And it's hard to tell at times which is which. That's why I cringe when you see a natural disaster like in New Orleans and some preacher ever, he'll get on TV and say that's God's judgment upon New Orleans. Well, I don't know. You can't say that with 100% truth. You don't know. Now there's a possibility. It's a good possibility it could be God's judgment upon them. But I don't see Satan attacking God. I don't see um, 
Satan attacking his own people, he attacks God's people. Okay? And just because you're a Christian or it's a, things happen to you, it's not necessarily because you're evil. Or because you've sinned, it could be Satan's attacking you to break your will as a, as a trial or a test. So Satan has deceit. He has power to influence men for evil. He has power to influence the nature, using nature and natural events. I thought of, every once in a while you'll see these stories where a, a group of Christian kids are like in vans and they're driving to camp and they, you know, like a storm and it causes them to fall off the bridge and they're all killed. I'd say that was an attack of Satan on them. God's people. He comes against us in the physical world. He comes against us with nature. Next. And this is where I want to camp out for a little bit. He has the power to bind people's minds to the truth of God. This to me is the most powerful and most dangerous and heartbreaking thing that I can speak about. Out of all these things that we see from Satan is his ability to keep people from the truth. This is why, Christian, you need the armor of God. This is why, Christian, you need to be strengthened with God's power. The power to, of him to deceive even the lost, the world, and even God's people at times. Matthew 13, Jesus tells a parable of this... Um, the power, excuse me. The parable of the seed, the sower of the seed. And he came and he threw some seed on this ground. And he threw some over here. He threw some over there. And then finally he threw some on good ground, right? And what did it say of the first one? When the seed that went on the path, it said Satan, representing the bird, came and what he plucked away. He ate the seeds before they could go into the people's hearts. This is the realm we need to concentrate on here. Satan stealing truth, keeping people out of heaven. 2 Corinthians 4, 3 through 4. It's up on the screen. But even if our gospel is veiled, you hear that? The good news of Christ is veiled. It is veiled to those who what? Are perishing. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded. Who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. Who is the image of God should shine on them. We are in a spiritual battle. And the battleground is for the souls of men. It's for your soul. Satan would come and take the gospel away from you. If you're a Christian, it's by the grace and power of God. Yes, the ability to steal truth from people and keep them from being saved. Now how does he do that? He creates doubt in the minds of men. In Genesis chapter 3, when Eve was tempted in the garden, Satan came along as a serpent and says, Hath not God said, You shall not surely die. You shall be like the Most High. What? That deceit that scheming and they fell and uh, every other person since that time corrupted with sin and evil of Satan's world Matthew 16 22 he creates doubt in the minds of men Jesus said I must go to the cross and die and on the third day be resurrected. 
Peter pulls Jesus aside and says, Oh Lord, may it never be. You don't need to die on the cross. What did Jesus say to him? Get behind me, Satan. Get behind me. You know not the work of God in this. Satan, the devil, scheming, putting doubts in the mind of Eve and Adam to sin, putting doubts in the mind of the Apostle Peter to Christ's mission to die and to come back to life. He is a deceiver. That's his wheelhouse. It is in the deceit that he has vested men for millennia. He has the ability to make men doubt their salvation and to being saved. How many times I've heard from people the gospel preached, I've shared Christ with people. The doubt, the doubt brings what? Fear. If I follow Christ, my, my friends will not like me. If I follow Christ, I will not be popular. If I follow Christ, I'll lose all this stuff. Scheming, creating doubts. If I follow Christ, if I become a Christian, my family will be divided. How do you know? Maybe Christ will save your whole oikos if you follow Christ. See the scheming, the deception, the doubts which create fear, and fear leads to disobedience. Creates doubts in the minds of men. Creates fear in people without, about becoming a Christian. And that fear leads to doubt. And it's just back and forth. Don't let Satan deceive you out of heaven this morning. The devil's deceit has power to bind people's minds to the truth of God. Creates doubt in the mind of men. He creates fear in people about becoming a Christian. He also has false teachers. 1 Timothy 4.1 And he uses false teachers in this deception. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the last times some will depart from the faith. What? Giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. False teachers on TV. I've said this. Many times. Sean Dittman came to my house this week. And there was some dude on TV. I think his last name was Popoff. Anyone seen Pop? This guy is ridiculous. If you call in today to this 800 number. And you get yourself some, holy, some of this water. And you drink it. Then God's got a miracle for you. Send me your money, because if you sow a dollar, you're going to get a hundred back. I'll ask that. If you really believe that, evangelist, why come you wouldn't send the poor people your money? And you get the hundred percent return. How about that, brother? Amen. Doctrines of demons. The cults. Who pervert, pervert the gospel in Christ. False teachers within our churches and without. Deception. Deceptions. Deceptions and schemes. After I'm reading this now, I'm blessed to be a Christian. I'm, I am like, right at this moment, I am feeling blessed. That if I can call upon the name of the Lord after the deceit of Satan and the power of sin in this world and Christ would save me, he's got me, man. Whatever you want, Lord. Here am I. Send me. Isn't that our job? To go into the world with the gospel to save people out of the deception, out of hell? That's why Christ has called us. To save us and to use us to help others come out of this darkness. To break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. 
Christ. There was power in the name of Christ to break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. The devil's deceit. He creates doubts in the minds of men and fear. And he uses false teacher to propagate his deceit. To blind people's eyes to the gospel. And he plays upon people's pride to keep them from coming to Christ. He, heck, he plays on the pride of Christians to keep them from doing God's work. And to keep them from God's grace and to be disciples of Christ. Satan fell from pride. I shall be like the Most High God. There's a trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Oh, but there should be a what? A quad entity? He wants to be the fourth. I can be like the Father, Son, and the Holy... Put Satan up there. I can be part of that. We'll just make... We'll move the trinity. We'll move it over and there's room for me here. What vain pride... There's no way. You're the created. How can the created become like the creator? You can't. And so in his pride, he fell and was cast out of heaven and to earth. Somewhere between Genesis 1 and 3, he fell. I don't know how long that was or how long it took, but somewhere between the creation and... Eve sinning, he fell. And it was because of his pride. And he works in the lives of Christians with pride. And God's saints, 1 Chronicles 21, 1. David, the man after God's own heart. He moved against David and said, Oh, David, your kingdom is, oh, it's grown so much. You're such a great king. You know what you should do? You should count all the people in your kingdom and see how great a king you are. Oh, that's a great idea. I should do that. What? That pride, God spoke against that. And he brought judgment upon David and God's people because of his pride. 1 Timothy 3, 6. Don't put novice, don't put young Christians as pastors and elders or what? Their head will just blow up. They will be prideful and they will fall and bring destruction upon God's church. Pride. Satan works and deceives in pride. And he keeps people from Christ with pride. I don't need Jesus Christ to save me. I'm a good guy. I can get to heaven on my, with my own works. That's a lie. There's no way to get to God except through Jesus Christ and His work. He is a deceiver. He is powerful in the physical realm and in nature in the hearts and minds of men. Now, what, how do we respond to this? What's our response to these verses? Is it fear? Should you fear Satan if you're a Christian? Never. You should never fear that old snake. Because you are in Christ. Your response this morning, if you do not follow Jesus Christ, I would run to him and receive him as soon as possible as my Savior. Today is the day of salvation. Today. What if the day was the only day where the light of the gospel would hit your heart and mind? And you left here, and the window of opportunity was closed. Run to Christ for salvation. If I was even doubting my relationship with Christ, I would not leave here without talking to a pastor or myself about my eternal destination. Run to Christ for salvation. Next, pray for those who need to be saved. I've said it, and I'm not trying to pump up John Bowling. I'm trying to pump up Jesus Christ. In this book are the names of a bunch of people that I've seen saved over the last two years. And I believe that they were saved. Why? Because I prayed for them. We prayed for them. And the power of God broke through the deception and people were, 
believed and followed Christ. If you're already saved, it is your goal to get yourself your phone, an old time journal, write down the list of those people you need to see get saved and you pray for them. Pray that the gospel would go deep into their heart and what Satan would not snatch away the truth from their hearts. Prayer works. My brother was saved. My brother was a, such a rebel. And I became a Christian first. And I prayed for my brother for eight years to be saved. And when he was saved, when he was about 20, man, it was a prayer, praise time. What if my mom, myself, my aunts and uncles, and my grandma and grandpa stopped praying for my brother? Do you think he'd be a Christian today? I don't know, but it helps. God calls us to pray. And he moves upon God's people to pray for the lost. No one comes to the Father unless what? The Holy Spirit. The Father draws them to salvation. Run to Christ for salvation. Pray for those who need to be saved. How about this response? Jesus gives all believers authority to rebuke demons. Command them to leave. If you feel like you're being hounded by spirits, tell them to leave. Get out of here. The power is given to you through Christ. Luke 9 warned. Jesus said, even the demons, they said to Jesus, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Luke 10, 17, and Jesus told them, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. Acts 16, 18, I charge you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. That's just telling a demon to come out, and she came out. You don't need all this hocus pocus chanting and crucifixes and stuff you see on TV that's all bull. It's hogwash. All you need is the name of Jesus Christ to come out and they come out. Christians should not fear Satan. You got to be weary. You got to have on your armor and be strengthened in Christ. You come against the enemy in your own power and you will be defeated. He said, we came in the name of Christ and they came out. This week there was a lady who called me and said, I think we have ghosts in our house. We hear noises when no one else is home, banging on the walls. I mean, it's either a rat, a woodpecker, or it could be Satan, or a demonic. And there are no such thing as ghosts. The Bible teaches to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. So when someone dies, they either go to heaven to be with God or they're cast into uh, hell, awaiting judgment day. Anything in between is of Satan. And she's like, I can't, I can't sleep. I, I just can't sleep. I don't have any peace. Will you come pray? I'm like, yeah, I'll come pray with you. And me and Chris go over and we pray with this person, pray for their house, and we renounce Satan in his work. And we prayed, and I think that if there was any demonic activity going on, it's not welcome. It won't come back. Why? Because we prayed in the name of Christ. And I told this lady who is a Christian, you don't have to have the pastors to come. You tell them in the name of Jesus, the same Holy Spirit is in me, is in you. We'll come and support you. We will pray for you, but if you feel oppressed or attacked, in the name of Christ, leave. And he will leave. He has to leave. So your response is in the name of Jesus. When you're attacked or you're seeing others attacked, in the name of Christ, speak to it to leave and it will. Do you understand that, people? Now, lastly, and I'll be done. Okay? Let's talk about this rebuking of spirits and, and stuff. When Jesus sent the twelve disciples ahead of him to preach the kingdom of God... He gave them power and authority over all demons and power. Luke 9, 1. We read it and it's on here. After the 70 had preached the kingdom of God in towns and villages, they returned with joy, saying, Even the demons are subject to us in your name. Okay, we have all that. When Philip the evangelist went down to Samaria to preach the gospel of Christ, unclean spirits came out of many who had them. 
And on and on it goes. Okay? Now, I was with uh, some other Christians in Colorado. And I don't know. And I just seen this thing where if someone comes with like a, a problem, like if they're deaf or something, I seen dudes, they like put their finger in people's ear and they start speaking to the devil of, of deafness. In the spirit of deafness, I command you to come out. Or the spirit of this, or the spirit of that. I don't see any of that in scripture. I just see Christians in, in the name of Christ telling demons to leave. I don't see any of that stuff like that in the Bible. Sometimes it's just a physical infirmity. We can pray for people to be healed. But that's on God's timing. It's not our timing. Maybe he doesn't want them healed. Maybe it's their thorn in the flesh. Okay? So you don't have to speak to the demon of lust. Paul says, flee young youthful lust. He doesn't say speak to the spirit of lust. And it leaves... So, we fight Satan's deceptions. He has, the, he has power in the physical world, yes. He has power in nature, yes. And he has the power to deceive and to bring the gospel and to deceive people's minds from receiving the gospel. And he does that how? By playing on our pride and fear and deceptions. False teachers and doubt. Don't doubt God. Don't fear God. Trust God. Put on the armor. Be strengthened by God. And you can overcome these schemes. Does that make sense? All right. So next week we'll come back and we'll talk about. We will talk about the armor of God. The belt of truth. The breastplate of righteousness. And what that means. So let's bow our head and pray. And we'll get out of here. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for. For sending your son to die on the cross for our sins. We thank you God for your power. We thank you for your salvation. I pray Father that your people would be strong against the schemes of the devil. And they would be clear to them how he operates in the mind. Speaking doubt and fear and playing upon people's pride. But I pray that your people will respond to these deceptions with your strength, your power. In the name of Christ, to, to walk in victory over sin. To walk and help their friends walk in victory over sin. And Father, to pray for our lost friends and family in our community, those in our community who need you, that they would be saved. Help us, Father. Help us to have victory and over sin. To shine light upon the deceptions and the schemes of the evil one. May we see those when they come up. May we be able to, to hear those when false teachers would come with another gospel. And to be able to shine light upon the lives of people who need you. Help our church to grow, Father, in spirit and in power and in number. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen.